Hello there, YouTube. Welcome into Dom's AI report. In today's episode, I want to talk about paid chat GPT, ad by chat GPT with Ryan Reynolds, investors on AI, AI versus human, best skills in AI economy, AI job market, and talking with the books. On the end, we're going to go with some memes. So I'm going to start with this tweet where Martin Bowling tweeted that he bought a pro version of ChatGPT. This is how it's going to look like. And there were some rumors on the Twitter sphere that it's going to cost $42. I think OpenAI team probably is testing the market with the different price points and something like A-B testing because some of the users reported that it's old, it's not available anymore. But we've got one user that got paid version. Next thing what I want to talk about is the advertisement created by Ryan Reynolds. I'm not going to play the YouTube video just not to be copyright strike, but I'm going to use this handy transcript and summary tool that will show me what Ryan Reynolds said in the advertisement. So specifically in the ad, he mentioned that the ad that I created using chat GPT, the AI technology. So he's riding on the hype. It's everywhere and now in mainstream. Still with chat GPT, Thomas Burgis tweeted that he posted the ASCII art to the ChatGPT and ChatGPT recognized what's behind the ASCII art. Like this is mind blowing. If you zoom in, this is text. We are, we are talking here about text. It's like in the 90s, early 2000s, you know, hacksaws on the internet, zines, FAQs, they, yeah, this is mind blowing. Aaron Levi tweeted that he had a dinner with 15 CIOs across every industry and the vast majority had already played with ChatGPT. So they're talking about the AI and business use cases. And I highlighted, I don't think I've seen a technology ripple that quickly. Someone below asked, did you ask how many had bought an NFT for comparison? <laughs> And he tweeted back with the meme that it's zero or not overlapping. So in general, C-level executives also talking about this technology and it's spreading really quickly, which reminds me of the 1994 internet boom. And then actually I tweeted that every 14 years we've, we get one of these Cambrian explosions. We had one around the internet in 1994. If you add 14 years, we had one around mobile phones, iPhone in general in 2007, 2008, and then add another 14 years, you've got 2022, and this is AI. Now moving on to AI versus human. And I'm going to start with Dr. Alan Thompson website, Live Architect. And he created a document about the AI and IQ testing, human versus GPT-3. And for example, on the bottom, I highlighted green, human got baseline 52% by average test score and GPT-3 already got 73%. This is another chart showing IQ leaderboard for AI and humans as of June 2022. You know, it's very old in AI field because in AI is everything happening so fast that, you know, half a year ago, it's already out of date, which you don't even see chat GPT on this leaderboard. So I'm going to scroll down and you're going to see that Dr. Alan Thompson is actually creating notes with notable events in IQ testing AI models. And I think he didn't even publish that information yet because I'm first time seeing this. He's claiming here that ChatGPT had an IQ of 
147, which is, you know, above the Mensa entry level. Moving on, here's the paper that was published a few days ago and I highlighted two parts. But before that, I just want to say that this paper is about text Da Vinci O3 model, which is a text model, large language model from OpenAI available via API for everyone to use in their applications. You can deploy the front end and use the back end as this model. So I highlighted two parts. First, the paper claimed that this text model only achieved a correct rate of 14%, but in zero shot prompts. And then second claim is that the same text appears to be approaching human level performance. And for the best prompt and parameters, the model answered 57% questions correctly. So what it means that we need to understand zero shot prompts and crafting the proper prompts. Moving forward, let's talk about best skills in new AI economy. You might ask what would be the best skills for the next five to 10 years in new AI economy. And they've tweeted that adaptability, critical thinking and empathy would be one of the most important ones. And I do agree. In fact, I posted my notes on the interview with CEO of OpenAI, where he was talking exactly that. And let me read you something. Sam Altman was asked what was the best way to prepare the kids for the future. And then he started to list some of the skills like resilience, adaptability, ability to learn new things quickly. And he mentioned creativity and then he corrected himself, although it will be aided creativity. It's actually worth to read this quote. Before Google came along, there was like a bunch of things that we learned, like memorizing facts was really important. That changed and now I think learning will change again. Learning will change again and will probably adapt faster than we think. Speaking of skills in AI economy, let's talk about the AI job market. So this tweet is about prompt engineering. It's, this is a new thing. On the left, you can see a job offer paying a quarter of a million dollars. And this is for AI developer prompt engineer. Now, this is a new thing. I went and checked it on LinkedIn. As of the rec recording it today, there were only like 50, 70 prompt engineers and AI developers. Well, let's check artificial intelligent job vacancy trend. Those three lines represent the blue one is all the job markets in UK. The gray one are contracts and the orange ones are permanent. Don't worry about the contract because the UK government is doing some uh, really bad stuff for the contractors and that's the reason why. But pay attention to blue line or orange. And we can see that from 2019 to 2022, we had a massive spike. So the industry is taking off. We can check the salary trend and it's not that correlated to the, the trend spike, but still, you know, the cheapest salary in AI field is 45K. Now, in some point in 2020, it was 120,000. Pretty good. And we can see the frequency that 65K is like a standard. Now, this nice table presents that there are 1800 live jobs positions where half of it is working from home and obviously more than half is a London based. Also, it's worth to mention that <laughs> JavaScript is required in 16% of jobs, Python only in 35%, like agile methodology is more important, Azure which OpenAI is based on is 30%, AWS is 25%, Java is 15%, pretty much same as JavaScript. 
So yeah, you can clearly see that Python language is a king. Right, I want to say that about those jobs markets and AI, it's not all doom and gloom. It's worth to, like this tweet is expressing from a software developer perspective. To replace programmers with robots, clients will have to accurately describe what they want. <laughs> so we're safe. It, it's never been the case. So take it with the grain of salt. Okay, let's stay a little bit with the AI job market here. I want to show you something really cool. I think it's going to be more interesting from here onwards. Uh, Bartosz Pampuch, Polish engineer. He is playing a 4D chess in real world. You know, he wants to automate the interview process. He posted it a week ago and he created his virtual avatar with his virtual voice and virtual knowledge with a brain from large language models. And he planned to perform a hundred interviews as this virtual person. Like, it's crazy because he's doing it openly, so it's not like a Turing test, but all his knowledge he put into the model and he wants to, he wants this model to perform a hundred interviews for him and then score the best job. Now, this one is very interesting. So Peter asked on Twitter, what would be the thing you're going to invest your time and money? And his audience is predominantly biotech, longevity and Silicon Valley folks and majority answers AI. So if you don't know where to invest, maybe this meme gonna help you. Okay, let's move on. The Wall Street Journal now reports that OpenAI and ChatGPT is now worth $29 billion. And this comes after the latest investment round from Microsoft that previously invested 1 billion in 2019. So some people actually on the internet, they refer to OpenAI as a small startup. That's not true. Like three years ago, Microsoft invested 1 billion. It was not small back then. And I also highlighted here the last part, which was founded as a nonprofit in 2015 among by Elon Musk, obviously. It's really important because now this company is making money. And it's important to understand that they started as a research company. And their main goal was to make sure that AI will be deployed in a safely manner. Just for a perspective, this makes them the sixth largest startup, most valuable unicorn in United States. It's actually funny that the first in sixth place, Elon Musk co-founded. Now let's move to talk to books. This is pretty cool. I'll show you demo. So for example, I'm going to ask this, how Nikola Tesla died. And you can have quick response directly. Yeah. In a hotel in New York, in room 33227, yeah, 1943. That's correct. So why am I showing this, this tool? Because, you know, you don't sometimes want to search Google for the answer, like from Reddit or from tweets or from YouTube guys. <laughs> but you sometimes want to just ask directly based on the the content in the books from the context in that's in the books, not on the internet. I think that's remarkable and pretty cool. It's like chat GPT, but tailored on the books. Okay. You made it till the end. So I'm going to finish with this nice picture generated by AI. So yes, it's not always great. As always, thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.